You know, we are positive about the United Kingdom's potential when it comes to trade and growth with markets that we are currently unable and prevented from trading with because of our membership of the European Union. And throughout our campaign, we have been on the side of optimism when it comes to our place in the world, our standing in the world, our economy, and the fact that we can grow the British economy by trading with the 2.2 billion consumers that are spread across the Commonwealth countries. And let's not forget, these are markets that we are currently under unable to strike direct trade deals with because of our membership of the EU. So one counter question to that, pretty <coughs> a natural one rather, will be that uh, London is also used as a getaway for, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a focal point for companies to move into Europe and elsewhere around that as well. And there are a lot of Indian companies who are based in London and then they reach out to people in EU. What would you like to say to them? Well, first of all, that they should be optimistic about Britain's future. They are here for a reason, and they are here because, of course, Britain has a thriving, strong and growing economy. That's because of our national policies that the government have undertaken. That is nothing to do with our membership of the European Union. Mm -hmm. And compare and contrast, compare the strength of the British economy compared to Europe's economy as a whole, a combined whole. You have a Eurozone crisis that is still continuing. You have record rates of unemployment um, across Europe. Um, 10 million people in France are unemployed. You've got rates of 50% of youth unemployment in places like Greece. Look at Italy, look at Spain, look at Portugal. These are not thriving, growing or prosperous economies. In fact, what we are seeing, we are seeing a hollowing out of those economies. We are a gateway to the world and Britain stands tall and proud, actually. We are a trading nation, all our history. If you look historically back at um, you know, our forefathers when they were undertaking business and transaction, our mercantile history is rooted in our ability to trade and grow our economy. That's internationally. That is not just with Europe. So we will, be a, we will continue to be a gateway, but a stronger gateway for new and emerging markets. Markets that are in fact growing. I mean, India is a classic example of an economy that is growing. India has the largest working age population in the world. It's about time that we struck up a direct deal, a trade deal with India, rather than going through the European Union, who quite frankly have brought paralysis to the EU-India relationship with a trade deal that started discussions in 2007 and have since, quite frankly, gone straight into a brick wall because trying to negotiate with 28 countries is simply too difficult and it's not achieving the results that Britain wants to see. Right. I mean, that's one key point, trying to negotiate with 28 countries mm. rather than with UK directly. Uh, coming to Indian companies specifically, Preeti. There have been a lot of investments. We have Tata Steel and several others who are coming. Uh, will this, will Brexit make it that much easier for them to access UK markets and pour in investments? Well, of course, as I've said, you know, we are a thriving economy. In fact, I would say that we are the bright spot when it comes to an economy with low business taxes, low rates of corporation tax, um, you know, the right kind of ethos when it comes to the ease of doing business. You know, we are soaring in the ease of doing business index. Let's not forget our business law, you know, regulation, regulatory environment is much more friendly to business. So the question would be, why would you not want to come and set up and invest in the United Kingdom? A, we are a gateway, but of course we speak the international language of business. You know, business is in the veins of Britain. And so compared to Europe, again, compare and contrast, we are thriving and we will have an economy that will deliver more and more opportunities. And of course, more jobs. You know, the more inward investment that comes, the more trade that is undertaken as well. There will be greater job creation creation and I think importantly for Indian businesses as well and for people from India with skills in particular that creates new opportunities, new horizons and greater partnership work in. There's a lot of uncertainty even as we speak and also of course uh, a lot of experts have said that if there is a Brexit the, that uncertainty will only get prolonged Indian markets just like elsewhere are very keenly watching each and every development. How do you see uh, the markets react in case there's a Brexit? 
Well, actually, I wouldn't speculate on markets. That is not my job. I'm a politician. And I think we have to be very careful about commenting on markets because, of course, markets, as ever, around the world, not just in the United Kingdom, they take on board risk, you know, and that's political risk, basically. They do the same at the time of elections. We saw this last year. We saw this in previous campaigns and elections. And this referendum is not new news. They have factored in the fact that there is a referendum taking place. Mm. What I would say, though, is, of course, look at how our financial markets have been doing. They've been very consistent. They've been very strong. That is because of our economic and market fundamentals. That is not because of Europe. And I think also it's important to say as well that when it comes to trade and transactions and markets, you know, we live in a world of uncertainty anyway. I would suggest that there is a greater risk if we were to remain in the European Union. Look at the prospects of Europe going forward. The European Union has been abundantly clear with its agenda of federalization and harmonization, the five presidents report, they're going to enlarge, they're going to integrate more. I would suggest that that's exactly what our financial market should be wary of because we will be dragged down even further potentially because of the Eurozone crisis. Right. Uh, coming back to the uh, companies and investments from India or South Asia in particular, there seems to be a lot of new rules, regulations coming up pertaining to IT companies, uh, the hospitality, catering and health are the sectors where we see a lot of Asians, Indians rather, coming in. Um, will Brexit make it much more smoother for these people to move across? Well, we've been saying throughout this campaign that as long as we remain a member of the European Union, our policy and our approach to immigration is not a fair approach. Our membership of the European Union means that we have no control over our borders and no control over the number of people from the European Union that come to the United Kingdom. That is a fact because of the Free Movement Directive. We are saying that if we vote to leave, and when we vote to leave the European Union, we can have a fairer immigration policy, one that brings in, yes, control, which is vitally important. You know, that's why the public elect their politicians to control their borders and safeguard um, these very important issues. But importantly, we can have a fair immigration policy, one that supports the brightest and the best to come to the United Kingdom from outside of the European Union. It is fair to say that currently our policy is one that is discriminatory, one that stops people from the Commonwealth countries, for example, from outside of the European Union who can work, want to work and have the right kind of skills that our economy needs. And of course, we should be welcoming them. And there are, of course, a lot of gaps as you have uh, in the past also spoken about, for example, the uh, chefs from, from uh, Asia in particular, that seems to be affecting a lot of restaurants and catering industry as a whole. Well, that's just one example. Um, the Catering Association, the Bangladeshi Catering Association, famously have been campaigning and lobbying for this issue um, for a considerable period of time as have many other Indian companies that have invested and are investing in the United Kingdom. They are the first to say that they think our regime of visa restrictions is far too restrictive. Um, they want to see people of talent and skills that they need for their own business growth and development in the United Kingdom, um, which would support greater inward investment. They want to see people of skills being able to come here. And actually, we think that's a fair approach. We think that would end the discrimination that we currently see in our immigration system and importantly as well I think you know it sends out a great signal around the world you know that Britain is a welcoming country when it comes to immigration we have great roots when it comes to migration and immigration different cultures we are a melting pot as a country and that is something that we've always celebrated and again we think that people that have the right skills the brightest and the best quite rightly should be able to come here and work one last question, Preeti. Uh, given the rhetoric on both the sides and the kind of reaction it has generated, how do you see the cabinet and, and the political spectrum coming together after the referendum is done? Well, this referendum has been a passionate campaign. There's no doubt about that. Um, people on both sides of the debate have very, very strong and, in my case, long-standing views on Europe and the fact that I have felt for over 20 years that Europe should reform and it's failed to reform and it's unreformable. I've campaigned for 20 years for a referendum as well. And so, you know, it's right, we are Democrats, we are elected, that the British public have their say. In terms of life after the referendum, 
I take the view that we are professional and responsible individuals. And of course, you know, we had our general election just last year. So we have a whole program of government, a whole program of work still to achieve, to implement and work together as colleagues. I've worked together with a range of colleagues and ministers and cabinet colleagues prior to the referendum. And I would continue to do so after the referendum as well. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.